Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I want you to know that what God wants to do right now is work a miracle in your life. Say, I know you're already blessed. Come on, tell them, say, I know that you're already blessed.
easily fall again. God did not promise us that our struggle was going to go away. But you know, God did promise us that if we be faithful, he will be with us. Now, wouldn't you rather have God with you than have all the trouble in the world behind you and God is walking right with you? And somewhere in the scripture it talks about there's come a time in your life when you're walking along and the road is so rough and it's so hard until you look around for God and you don't see him. But as you continue to go on, and then when you start questioning God, say, Lord, so now, when it was tough, where were you at? God said, that's when I had you, what? I was carrying you. You was in my own. <laughs> See, there are, there, there are times when you're going through things that you cannot make it through by yourself. If it was not for the love and the mercy of our Lord and God and Savior, you wouldn't make it. So I want you to look at somebody and, and, and tell them this. I've heard this down through the years. And we're going to see if we can talk about it just a little bit. But I'm going to need your help now. I want you to look at them, look them in the eyes, and tell them this. Say, you see my glory, see my glory. but you don't know my story. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You see my glory, but you don't know my story. You see the things around me now. But you don't know what I had to do to get these things around. Amen. Amen. You see a smile on my face. But you don't know how much suffering and pain that I went through for the smile on my face. You see a little heart in my life. But you don't know my trial and my tribulation. And let, let, let's just break it down and get real today. You, you, you see me riding in an automobile. But unless you was close enough to me, you don't know what my car knows for. Oh, you see me living in a house, but unless you close enough, you don't know what my notes are. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what my insurance is. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you see me with clothes on. But you don't know the time and the nights that I stayed up all night long working. Thank you, Lord. To have a paycheck to pay for my clothes. Yes, Lord. Yes. To see my glory. Yes. But you don't know my stuff. Yes. You see right now what's around me, yes. but you don't know how I got there. Yes. So this is why I'm, what we're saying today. Now, what are we going to have in the end? When we go through all of these trials and tribulations, yeah. when we struggle so hard to be faithful to God, yeah. when we struggle to live a saved and a holy life, yeah. when we invite the Holy Spirit to come in and what does engulf our lives and elevate us up and get us to the point that why we are praising when we praise all by ourselves. Yeah. Some folks only will praise when company is around us. They will only praise God when somebody is able to look at them. But I want to be able that I can praise God all by myself. Yeah. And I can praise him sometime when you're wondering what in the world is wrong with that man. How can he be praising God in times like this? How can he be praising God when all of us are suffering and going through our trials and tribulations? How can he praise God when I'm so sad and I don't know what to do? You see my glory, but you don't know my story. All of us have a story. We just don't want to tell it. Amen. We want to make you think that everything is just all right with us. That we don't have no problem. We don't have no trial. We don't have no tribulation. We just come to church and just praise God that everything is all right. But now we say, yeah, you just keep telling that. Yes, keep on telling it. Mm -hmm. Then when trouble comes, you ain't going to have no praises. Because what you're praising now, you're praising the enemy now. And God wants you to praise him. Yes, Lord. Yes, God denied the praises of the saints. Yes, For the last several weeks, we've been talking to you about who is fear. First time we, the subject we use, we ask you, who are you following? The next Sunday we ask you, how many men have you called? The next Sunday we ask you, we said that we was in the right place at the right time. The next Sunday we said, it's good for us to be here. 
The next thing that we said, what is your duty to the church? And last time, who remember what we was talking about? Come on now. Yeah. We talked about forgiveness. We said that sometime in our life, we ought to look at an individual and tell them, you hurt me. Because forgiveness hurts. When you go through the process of forgiving someone, you have went through some hurt. I don't believe you believe it. Some folks, the reason things are not right with them, they haven't forgiven. They're still holding on to things that happened to them 20 years ago. And it's still hurting. But they just won't let go. It's just like I heard Brother Glenn Hall said once. He was talking about uh, a monkey in the monkey trap. You heard about the monkey in the monkey trap. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about the monkey in the monkey trap. So there was a group of natives in another country. So they decided they came up with a way of catching a monkey. So what they would do, they built a box. And inside of that box, they put all kinds of fruit that the monkey loved inside of that box. And they cut a hole in the box, just big enough that the monkey's hand could go in like that. And when the monkey put his hand in the inside of the box and got a handful of fruit, his hand was open up. And when the natives would start running towards him, the monkey was trying to shake the box loose. But he wouldn't let go of the fruit. He held on to the fruit. And they were able to kill him because he wouldn't let the fruit go. If he had to let the fruit go, he could have closed his hand up and pulled it out the box. Follow me now. Some people are hurting so and they're still holding on to that old hurt. And they won't let it go. By holding on, you can't get your hand out of it. Right. But if you let God have it, yes. you give it over to him. Yes. And tell him, Lord, I can't do nothing with it now. Yes. Say, it's hurt me too bad. Yes. Somebody used to sing that that's saying a song. I don't know you all don't know nothing about that. It hurts too bad. Mm -hmm. You all have never heard that. Yeah. You have, sister. That's right. Be honest with you. <laughs> It hurts too bad. Let it go. Let it go. Let the hurt go. Peter was learning the basics of life that Jesus had taken two years and a half to teach him. Peter learned how to pray. He learned about forgiveness. He even learned something about healing. He learned that Jesus was able to perform miracles before his eyes. He saw his mother-in-law heal. But here, Peter was coming down to a point where Jesus was sort of talking about going back and leaving him here. Mm -hmm. And Peter was concerned. Now, you know, you're talking about going back to your kingdom. Now, what are we going to have mm -hmm. when, you, when, you, when you get in the kingdom? What, 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 what would we, we have? Peter had also seen Jesus talking to the young rich man. Mm -hmm. The young rich man came to Jesus and wanted to know, now, what can I do to have it? Yes, Lord. What, what can I do? Mm -hmm. He said, now, all you get is simple. All 
all you got to do is just give up what you got and then come on and follow me. But the young man could not give up what he had because what? He couldn't turn it loose. He couldn't turn it loose with his possession, all the things he had. This is what's happening to people in the world today. They can't accept Jesus because they won't turn it loose. They're holding on to the world. And you cannot drag the world into Jesus. We thank you uh, for coming and being a part of our service today. Our regular Sunday school begins each morning, Sunday morning at 9 30. Our regular worship service began at 1045 each Sunday. This is Tomola Church of God, where we praise God and love one another as God's children. So we invite you to come and be a part of our service each and every Sunday.